So keyframes is something that could be a little confusing and sometimes complex if you're not really sure what it is or how to use it. But today on this OpenShot tutorial, I'm going to show you some simple ways to use keyframes within OpenShot that's going to make this a little bit easier to understand. So let's go ahead and see how we could do keyframes within OpenShot. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. Okay, so before we get into how to use keyframes within OpenShot, let me give you a general explanation of what a keyframe is. And so a keyframe is basically points in your clips where the properties of your clip, like say the dimensions, the width, height, even the volume is different from one keyframe to another. So that's the general concept of what it is. And quite often, most people use keyframes whenever they want to apply a different animation, a different look, or maybe they want to fade in and out of volume or even just turn it off. So that's kind of like the general idea. And so here I'm going to show you the basics of using keyframes. And I would say the keyframe capability of OpenShot is fairly basic. But if you do play around with this, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is obviously drag your clip down to your project timeline. And then what you want to do is make sure that the clip that you want to apply to keyframes is selected. So it's highlighted in red. And then you want to right click on your mouse and then go here to properties. So now you're going to see all these different properties. And the majority of these are keyframeable, meaning that you can adjust the settings for particular keyframes within your clips. Now, what I'm going to show you here is how to apply keyframes at the beginning and then kind of show you how this would actually apply to you, you know, using animations for your video. And it's going to be very simple. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your playhead is at the beginning of your clip. And so the easiest way to do that is to go here and then go to jump to start and it'll go back to the very beginning of your clip. And so in this case, what I want to do is I want the actual video to actually zoom in. So it's going to be small at the beginning and then it's going to zoom in a lot bigger. So right now, if you just play this, it's full size, right? But if you wanted to start smaller at the beginning, what you can do is you could actually adjust the dimensions here. So here's scale X, here's scale Y. So all you have to do is adjust it. And this isn't the best way to do it. I would say if you want to keep the proportions correct, all you have to do is type in a number. So if, if one is like 100%, 0.50 is 50%. So that way the dimensions are 100% correct. And I'll show you another way as well. So let's make this even smaller. Let's just say about 10% and we'll do 10% here on Y. Okay, so 10% here. And now if we actually watch this, we press play, it's small throughout the entire clip. But what I wanted to do is start small and then get larger. And so now you could add another keyframe. So there are a number of ways you could do this. If you actually adjust any of these numbers in these properties, it will automatically create a keyframe. So let's say, for example, I want this to be now 75% and this one's 75% as well. And you'll also notice whenever you add a keyframe, there are these little green markers. It's kind of hard to see unless you really get in close, but there are green markers here signifying keyframes. So if I go back to the very beginning, so there's nothing there and we press play, see it zooms in. And it stays at that particular property until you change it and add another keyframe. So we could add another keyframe here. And in this case, I want to go ahead and crop it going to go ahead and crop it just a little bit, crop the height, crop the width. And I'm also going to crop the X and Y position as well. And this is just to show you kind of like what you can do. So it's not, it's not actually uh, perfect, but you can kind of see that. And you could also adjust the location of X axis, uh, Y axis. So horizontal and vertical, and you could also adjust the position as well and you could also adjust the rotation here so just a lot of different things but let me show you how that works so we'll go back to the beginning and we'll watch it again let me move this step back we'll watch it again 
So it zooms in, it has all these different dimensions. And for each particular keyframe, whatever property that you have, uh, that's actually what it's going to animate to. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So for example, if you were at this position, you notice the numbers are different. And then whatever position or numbers that you put here, that's what it's going to end up as. Okay, so that's kind of like this whole concept of keyframes and animation. And at the same time, you can do a number of things on the actual keyframe itself. Uh, the first thing you could do is you could actually change the smoothness of it. Okay, so if you actually go to any one of these properties and you see right here, this means that there's a keyframe. But if you right click, you'll notice that there's other options. There's Bezier, Linear, Constant, Insert Keyframe, Remove Keyframe. So what this means is this is actually controls the smoothness of the keyframe. So the default is linear. So it's just a gradual animation to the next keyframe. There's also Bezier, which gives you a lot more options. You can ease in and out. And there's many different versions of that. And there's also constant where nothing happens in between these keyframes. Basically, there's no animation until you get to this point where it just suddenly changes. So let me kind of show you that. Now, I can't really tell too much difference with, between ease in and ease out versus linear. You know, but for some people, they could tell the differences right away. So right now it's linear. So let's go ahead and change this to Bezier, ease in, ease out. So you'll notice that this now changes. It's now a curve. And if you press play, the animation is going to be slightly different. And I know this isn't the greatest example, but I'm just kind of showing you it's animating to it. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust this really quick because I definitely want this to be in the center. Let's go ahead and I'll move this around. All right. We'll move right there. Okay. So that's a little bit better. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So we're watching this. And once we get to this keyframe right here, it actually changes to a, a Bezier curve right there. Actually, it started right there at the beginning. And then let's go ahead and change it to the constant one. Okay. So we'll go to this keyframe. And now instead of having a Bezier curve, now we say constant. And what you notice is there is really no animation. It just stays in this fixed properties. And then all of a sudden when it gets to that other keyframe, it changes. Okay. So I guess there are certain times when you can use the constant keyframe versus a linear or Bezier, but it's really up to you. And also there is an option where you could insert keyframe. Uh, but as I stated earlier, if you change any of the dimensions, it'll automatically create a keyframe. And you can also remove keyframes as well. So it'll all automatically go back to the previous properties of the keyframe. And obviously, you can always type in the properties that you want. Okay, so whatever dimensions that you want. And so as you can see there, that is a very simple way to do keyframes. And as I stated earlier, this is very basic. <laughs> this isn't probably uh, the type of animation you're going to do. But you kind of understand the concept where you could change all these properties and you could also change the volume properties as well. So let's say, for example, at the beginning of this clip, I already have the volume at zero, right? Let's say, for example, at this keyframe, I want the volume to go up. So all you have to do is just increase this. Okay. So it'll gradually. So if you go here at the beginning, it starts off at that volume. Whenever I got out of college and see, and then it'll gradually increase to whatever volume you have. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that keyframe and some other things with open shot keyframes currently there isn't a way that i can reset all the keyframes at once say for example you wanted to you know remove all these keyframes uh, there isn't a way for me to currently do that as far as i know so um, hopefully open shot will add that in the future where you can reset all the keyframes at once and some other things that might help you whenever you're using keyframes, if you notice, you know, uh, moving from one keyframe to another, currently there isn't a way to go from one keyframe to another, which can definitely be a problem because these keyframe markers are really small and sometimes you might not be at exactly the place where you had keyframes. So one of the things that I do is if I know that I'm going to add a keyframe, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and make this change. I'm going to reset this, remove this keyframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a marker. Okay. So what a marker is going to do is it's going to set a point here, a marker right here. So I'm going to go here, add a marker. So now there's a marker. 
So what's nice about this is you have a keyframe and a marker. So that means you could go from one keyframe to another really easily if you have markers. And so that way you don't have to manually try to get from one keyframe to another. And so that's kind of what I do whenever I'm going to add a keyframe. Like uh, say for example, I'm going to add a keyframe here. I automatically add a marker as well. So then that way I could move from you know, one keyframe to another really easily. So if you go here, here's previous marker, here is next marker. And so that is a really easy way for you to, you know, kind of see where your keyframes are, but at the same time, move around your clips a lot quicker versus trying to do this manually. For fast website hosting and top-notch service and features, check out SiteGround, the preferred service news at geekoutdoors.com. For more information, check out the filler link in the description area below. And now another thing that you could do uh, with keyframes in OpenShot is you could actually copy these keyframe properties. Now this isn't exactly a perfect thing uh, because as far as I've seen, you can only copy the properties um, at the end. And at the same time, it only takes certain properties. So let's say for example, I wanted to copy it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, go to copy, copy keyframes and if you notice there are a few options there's alpha scale rotation location time and volume so you could copy all those properties or you could do all at once so it'll copy all of those properties and say for example i have this clip here and then i chose the clip and if you notice here are the current properties and i'll right click and then I'll do paste and now when you do that it's going to bring over the rotation scale x and scale y and the volume if it had any and unfortunately it doesn't bring anything else over and so that's one way that you could copy some properties keyframe properties from one to another so that will save you some time but as i stated earlier it's not quite perfect because it doesn't bring all the properties and at the same time i can't choose uh, which keyframe property i want to bring over it like at which point you know it'll just take the very last keyframe properties that you had so you can see here it's rotation 24.79.75 and if you go here it's the same as the last keyframe properties i had as you see there and so uh that is how you would actually apply and use keyframes within OpenShot. and as i stated earlier this is a very basic way of doing this but as you can see here if you play around with this with all these various properties there's also alpha channel properties as well there are a lot of things that you can do with this you just kind of have to be patient and at the same time make sure you have markers in place where your keyframes are set so that is it for this particular video if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways in which you use keyframes within OpenShot, leave that in the comments area below and if you did want to see more of my open shot tutorials and tips i do have an entire playlist i'll leave that in the description area as well and if you're a creative geek like me and you want to get exclusive access to more content that i don't put out here publicly on my youtube channel then join my goal content creators group where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there and the best part is all of this is free simply head over to the link below check out my page and sign up for my goal content creators group so as always if you did get value out of this video be sure to share like and subscribe